a bit of jeopardy don't we christopher no we don't <laughs> betty does don't you You love a bit of jeopardy don't you so basically instagram's not working look she's wearing her block printed bandana especially and now she's like why am i here okay buoy i think you can probably get off now you're just trying to get me to give you tummy tickles also there's a fly in here annoying bugger off fly so, um, right, let's get you down, Bowie. Whoa, well done. We didn't spill the water. Oh, gracious me. What a to-do. Right, so um, hopefully the people from Instagram are going to come over to uh, Facebook and YouTube. If not, I'll post it later and you can watch it later. Um, I've brought my new dressing gown. A few things have happened this morning, one of which was me... Um, dropping this printing block into my lap earlier and I've now got red paint on my crotch which I then <laughs> which I then tried to wash off and then I thought oh should I dry it with a hairdryer and then I thought no because that will set the paint okay so this is my new dressing gown well robe let's call it a robe that I've just bought actually from India actually um, from Etsy if anyone's interested, it wasn't very expensive, that's been block printed. I thought I'd bring it along to show you. I mean, this is what we're all aiming for, right? I mean, obviously, the way they do this in India is amazing. And that's not what I'm going to be showing you today. But I just sort of felt like it was relevant and I wanted to show you. And it's very, it's very lightweight. It's very good for summer. Um, but I also feel like I want to support these guys because this is what they do they 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 carve these wooden blocks jaipur is the main center for this and um i think they've really been hit hard by the pandemic i know we all have a lot of people have for many many different reasons um but i was approached by somebody who's like a sort of distributor of these in the uk or in europe and I really wanted to sort of help support them because I think obviously they used to rely on a lot of tourism and so on and so forth. Anyway, uh, so these blocks that I'll be using, here she goes, that's the dog. These blocks that I'll be, <laughs> it ends in a massive sneeze, uh, that I'll be using have all been hand carved, okay, by these tradespeople. Uh, in India. It's a very, very sort of ancient thing that they've done for generations and generations. If you are interested in all of that, there is a little bit of stuff online that you can read about. There's also a little bit in uh, this book, House of Print by Molly Mahon. This is published by my publisher. It's a great book all about this. If I'm honest, I don't love the cover because I just think there's I so do. much... There's so much more cover. inside. <laughs> What's it look like? What does what look like? The, the cover. cover. Yeah. I just oh think God, it's not very colourful. Beautiful. <laughs> In a minimalistic kind yeah, of way. Yeah, it's quite minimalistic, isn't it? And I think I've realised I'm a maxim. Here she goes again. I'm a maximalist. <laughs> that was so loud, Betty. That was really loud. Just FYI. Anyway, that's a good book. We now sell this uh, book alongside all the other things that we sell to do with this. So we've got four print sets of wood blocks at the moment. One of them is sold out, but we will be getting more of those. And then I'm just uh, having some designed for Christmas 
stuff as well. So that's exciting. And I'm going to show you how to use them in a minute. Can we, can we just ask some people to say, can you see us? Can you see us all? Right? Okay, On everyone. YouTube and Give Facebook. us a wave, ladies and gentlemen. Who cares Give about us Instagram? Wave. Nobody cares Oh, about my goodness, Instagram. you're so rude about Instagram. Well, Stop it's it. it's the bane of my life. Well, that's as maybe, but it's also my favourite thing and a lot of other people's favourite thing. Oh, well. And you need to stop that. Just because you don't like it. Just, Ow. oh, I'm not even going to go there, actually. You've just slapped yourself. Yes. Well, that was stupid. I mean, I know you shouldn't dislike Instagram, but there's no need to slap yourself. Anyway, uh, what I've got here <clears throat> are all of the napkins that I made for our little um, party that we had a couple of weeks ago. We had a staff party. You know what? My favourite one I can't actually find. I think someone's nicked it. So it was a blue one and it had the coral going up it in red. You were and I giving them away in your drunken stupor. No, I was you were. not. Was I? Did yes. I say someone could keep one? Oh, well, that, said, that's where it's gone said, then. That you said take home the one that you like. Did I? Yes. Oh, well, most people didn't take them home. That's lucky. So I've still got them here to show you. What I wanted to say was I have put these all through the washing machine. Um, and they live to tell the tale, remarkably. And they've all, uh, and obviously, because I have access to these things, I've trimmed them all as well. Look, this has got a lovely orange sort of crochet trim on it. I'm just going to show you some of these. Well, is everyone waving and saying hello? We have viewers. Good. Uh, and this one's got like a pink rickrack. Oh, and this, I love this trimming. We sell this in all the colours. This frilly gingham trimming, which has kind of ruched it in a little bit because it's elasticated. Oh, that. oh, and I actually did a tablecloth as well. I mean, it got completely carried away and just sort of put my whole life on hold for probably 48 hours while I made all of these. But I had immense fun and made Bowie's bandana. If you want to do that, you need to think about the shape of the bandana being triangular and, the sh and where your prints are going. Learned the hard way there. I, 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 I made a couple of those. Anyway, so here are all my lovely napkins. They've all been through the washing machine. Uh, some have got trimmings. Some have got frayed edges, actually. Love a frayed edge because I would definitely be thrown off the sewing bee within the first week because of my, not because of my sewing skills, but because of my sewing practices, which invariably involve just going for it really quickly. Uh, so I don't do tacking. Sometimes I don't even get a matching thread. <laughs> so the, the thought of a frayed edge is obviously very appealing to me. Because you just get a pin and you just fray it, fray it. Very simple. Is that like fray bentos? No. Okay. Not in any way, shape, or form. What is fray bentos? Is that spam? Pies. Pardon? Pies. Oh, pies. Bake in a tin pie. Oh, a bake in a tin pie. I can't think of anything worse, to be honest. Anyway, so those are my lovely uh, napkins. Now, the next thing I want to say is that the the nature of this is not perfect it's not perfection okay it, you're not aiming to get a perfect print every time and that's kind of the beauty of it so it will always just look a little bit and i think this this let's just hang on let me just grab this and let's go to this one on the overhead let's just look at this for a second now here's where i accidentally did a blob so ignore that but i just want to show you how invariably every time you print it it's slightly different sometimes you've got slightly less paint sometimes you've got slightly more paint and so on uh, let me just show you a few of them under the camera here now so you can see um, and then this one was the one I did all over the tablecloth actually but you know it it depends on the actual wood block and, and, and sort of how thick the design is but it's not always going to print perfectly every time. So that's the first thing to say. OK, come back to me, Chris, please. Thank you. That's the first thing to say. So we're not aiming for some sort of perfectly printed uh, napkin or tablecloth that like you'd buy at the shops. This is a handmade thing. And, um, you know, and that's part of it. And obviously you're just using a piece of wood that's been carved. I mean, it's just lovely. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you did potato prints at school. It's very similar. But obviously some of these designs are a lot more intricate and they're ready cut for you and ready carved for you and and that's you know that's great okay so and in fact actually 
the, the sort of little test prints that I did here show you even more clearly how sometimes it works better than other times. But what I want to show you now is how to do this or how I've been doing it to achieve fairly, um, you know, results that, that don't vary too much. OK, so you're going to get something that looks sort of fairly much the same all over. Now, the other thing that I'm really into is printing on gingham or stripes. So we're not just printing on plain fabrics, which Molly mostly does in her book, although she'll often do a print in one colour and then print something else over the top. And indeed, that's obviously how a lot of these, uh, like my robe, that's how it's, it's made in, in sort of a, pr a process where you'll do one colour first and then you'll change your blocks and then you'll pin the fabric out again and go over and do a second colour. And so you get this build up and you create depth and you create different colours. And I just think that uh, starting off with a patterned fabric already sort of helps you on your way with that. Obviously, you don't want too busy a fabric because then you're not going to see the print. And in fact, actually, some of the red, I think the red works well with a darker coloured print, but some of some fabrics that you might have already at home that might have a Dixie print on them or a flowery print, you know, or a Liberty Lawn or something, they just might be too busy. So you want a fabric, if it has got a design on it, to be quite simple, like a gingham, like a check. I mean, I'm obsessed with the neon pink uh, stripe, which comes in lots of other colours, I think it's behind me there in orange. And we've got the ginghams in all of the colours. Uh, and I just think it works really nicely. Now, if you buy our pack that we sell, um, in that, I, I dithered around for ages as to what to include in this pack. But in the end, I decided on a piece of the plain calico, almost to use as a test fabric if you want to, or just to do something very, very simple. And then I've included two lighter colour fabrics. So I've got the yellow gingham, like this one and of course the pink neon like this one in here and then I included two colours that I think work really well over those two so I think the red works really really well over the pink stripe and I think that the neon pink works really really well on the yellow and then of course you can choose your woodblock set that you want to go with the paints. Now what else will you need? Well Yes, what else will you need? Is that what you were wondering, Christopher? I was wondering. It was at the top of my tongue. <laughs> Tip of my tongue. The top of your tongue. Uh, you won't need very much. Okay, you're going to need some textile paint. And if you haven't bought the kit, we do sell them all separately. So it's, you'll see them all lined up behind me there. We sell uh, kit, like little sets of them, which has the neon in, actually, that set. And then we also sell separate pots. Why are you laughing? Because you look a little bit deranged looking oh. at the monitor and trying to point at the same time. Okay, I'll stop looking at the monitor. I know, because it was always the other way. I get confused. So we sell the separate paints also. So we've got all the colours covered, all the options covered. I am obsessed with the neon pink, and we are now selling it separately as well, because I ordered a truckload of it. So we've Ooh. got plenty of A that. whole truck. No, not quite a whole truck. Good. Um... Then the other things you'll need. Right, OK, so this is what, how I've been doing it. You basically you are going to need something underneath your fabric to give it some... So bounce, you've got some give, some give, bounce. bounce. Yes. Give. So you've got some... You can, you can... Yeah, give is a good word. So it has give. some give when you're pressing down. OK. Uh, there's another word I'm trying to think of and I can't think of it. Anyway, the other thing that I started off using, which I think is quite a good idea, and I might have just invented this myself, I don't know, maybe someone else uses it, is an old mouse uh, pad. Mat. Mouse pad? Mat. mat. That's the word. Mouse mat. You know, for mouse on your computer, not an actual mouse. Um, and this is just a, a dense foam, which has got quite a lot of give. Purchase, that was the, the word I was thinking of. You want some purchase does that make purchase? sense no you know when purchase. you use the word purchase you're just trying to sell things now. no 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 you know when you use the word purchase subliminal to give you subliminal all, all sort of grip no it's not grip as such anyway you want move give. on Gillian. uh so i've been using a mouse mat which i then cover with a, a an old dishcloth and then i just pop my fabric onto there if you don't have a mouse mat that you can go and steal from your computer you could just use a wad of towels so I've also just done it with a towel sort of doubled or 
quadrupled into folded up underneath so that should give you enough give as well so that's what you're going to have under your fabric that you're printing onto i am just going to use my mouse mat today because i love it okay but obviously the thing with the, the mouse mat is it's only very small and so you have to keep moving it around where you're printing so it's not the best thing actually do you know what when i was doing the tablecloth i don't know that i did use it maybe i just used a towel then because it got a bit complicated moving it around everywhere we've got a question already oh yeah go on yeah what what um what are the fabric paints what what, what are they called they are just fabric paint water-based is that water-based fabric so paint. If somebody went on your website yeah just, just type in in fact if you're going paint. onto our website right at the very top it says spin weave print i've print. added in the word print along the very very top menu spin weave print if you click on print all of this shizzle comes up okay there you go annie you know where to go so or you could just type in fabric paint and it'll come up the trimmits ones are slightly bigger than the neon pink one which is made by rico uh, I think this is 40 mil and these are 50 mil. Yes, but they're all the same. They are water based, so you can thin them with water if you want to, although I'll come on to that in a second. And then they're fixed with an iron. OK, which Ooh. is why I didn't want to hair dryer my printed crotch earlier because I thought just I would move fix on, the Gillian. paint. Don't, don't <laughs> it looks fixating. most unfortunate. I might just put it on a cold wash when I get home. So basically heat will fix this. Um, and when I'd finished all of these napkins, I just turned them over. I put a tea towel on top of the back of them and then I just ironed them for a few minutes and that sets the paint. So that's very straightforward and it's water-based. So that's easy. Now, the other thing you're going to need is uh, some sort of receptacle for your paint in which to press your wood block, okay? I tried a couple of things with this. I watched some videos online of the guys in India uh, actually doing this, guys and girls actually doing this. And I was trying to see what they were pressing their wood blocks into. And it was, a, it was like a pad, but it wasn't like an ink pad. It wasn't a f just foam. Um, and I think wool felt is often used or something akin to this. So you kind of make a pad of it and then put it in like a little uh, I don't know like a little plastic tray or something the only thing I found with this is it does absorb a lot of the paint into the fabric and it kind of wastes it so what I ended up doing was getting a piece of sponge again to give me give when I'm pressing the wood block into it then I covered the sponge whoops I covered the sponge with an old dishcloth and then on there I put a piece of cotton fabric just a, an off cut of old cotton fabric and because it's cotton I found that it didn't like and, and it's sitting on foam I found that it didn't sort of draw the paint in when I did put the paint on here it really sucked it in so what I do now and I sort of get oh god this one keeps jumping out of my hand what I get on here now is it the paint sits on the surface of it which is kind of what you want so you want to be able to press the wood block into the paint and for the paint to be sitting on the surface and not have just soaked in somewhere unless you're going to make very very wet paint so you can water this down but to be honest with you everything that you see that i've done i've done it with it undiluted i think if you wanted to also you can mix these colors so if you want to mix the colors together and if you wanted to make them more watercolory if you know what i mean by that so that the, the the designs aren't quite so bold and they knock back a little bit maybe if you're doing one layer first and you want it to be quite knocked back you would water it down a little bit more and i'll show you on my test fabric how that works then the only other things i've got is i've just got some water and a cloth to clean up and a towel to clean up um, and i've got some paint brushes i happen to have these weird foamy things that I've, i think i bought really really cheaply somewhere and i can't remember what for um, these are also quite useful if you've got anything like this as an alternative to pushing the block down into the colour. So as an alternative, you can pad the design with this kind of foamy thing if you want to and pad the paint on that way. But that's not essential. I would say if you're pairing this right back, you just need a paintbrush and then this kind of set up to just push this into and I also think it's quicker if you're printing a large design it's quicker to do this than keep dabbing it 
And that is pretty much it. And obviously then an iron and that's it. You don't need anything else really. So let's just jump straight into it. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to quickly show you the sets that we've got. Now, I know that uh, I mentioned that we had four different sets. Unfortunately, one is sold out, which is the one with the birds and the little dandelions. That's not available at the moment, but it will be again soon. In the meantime, I still have got the set, which is the Paisleys. Do you want to go to the overhead for this, actually, darling, please? I'd love to. I know Could you, you move would. it all up a little bit? Yes, I can, darling. Just a moment. I think, wait, I've lost my... Oh, no, there it is. There. Is that a good spot? That's a good spot. All right, so this is one set. This is like my under the sea set, if you like. And this is almost like an anemone and then some sort of seaweedy ones. And I think, can I show you some examples? Yes, here we go. Look, there's mm. the that one printed. In fact, I have got them all printed on here. I love this coral. I think it's really lovely. So that's that that's that set, and I'm going to be using those in a minute actually. Um, this is the Paisley set that we do. Okay, where are the Paisleys? Here's some of the Paisleys I've done. Okay. Um, quite traditional these, but I thought this had like a bit of a modern take on it when I chose this one. It's got like little daisies in it. That's more of a traditional Paisley. And then this one, which is very, very nice, which prints up like that. Okay, so that is an, a set. And then this is our last set. Uh, it's probably my favourite because I love the heart. Um, the polka dot heart, which prints up like this. And then there's a scallop. Have I got that? Yes, here we go. There's a bit of scallop for you. I love the scallop. This is very now. And then this one. There's that one printed up. Okay. So that, that's the other set there. Okay. Right. So let me show you how to do it. It's very straightforward. It's not rocket science. Anyone can do this. Oh, but I'm not creative, Jill. I, I won't be able to do it. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> oh, yeah. Could I thing. do it? Do you know what? Yes, I think you could, Chris. No way. Although you are quite creative, aren't you? Am I? Oh, one thing I've forgotten to say is you just wash these in, in soapy water at the end. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is they're, they're like little works of art because people are like, oh, can you put them on display? Yes. Have them on display like little ornaments when you're not using them. And I actually also think that once you've used them and they've got little bits of trapped paint in them, they're even more beautiful. But they are exquisitely carved. But yeah, just soap and water and you're done. OK, and obviously all of the ones that I've shown here to you now, I have used. So they have got paint on them when they arrive, although I have used this one. But when they arrive, they're all white like this. So that's the set that you'd get if you bought them. Michelle on Facebook, she's Hello, saying, Michelle. she's saying, are the inks washable or do they fade in time? No, they shouldn't fade once you've heat set them. So you have to iron them. So you have to iron them for a few minutes. Okay. Oh, something just fell down. What was that? Maybe it was Instagram. It was. <laughs> <coughs> um, Heat set them and they'll be fine, all right? They're not going to wash off. I guess they might fade over time. You know, if it was a family heirloom and it was 50 years later, probably. Give it to me, I'll fade it. How will you fade it? By washing it. Oh, yes, he's quite good at that. By popping a little bit of bleach on there and in there on a 60 degree. So, yeah, just heat, heat them, iron them, and then just wash them on a 30. They'll be fine. Okay, but it is Get all water-based, all right? So I'm just going to put my mouse mat down first. Let me put it in the right place. Why are you laughing about my mouse mat? Nothing. And then I'm putting the cloth on top. Let's start off with plain old calico. If you want to go to the overhead, please, darling. Um, this calico is really nice quality, actually. I just wanted, I don't know if you can see, there's like a fleck in it. It's really lovely. It's quite nice, nice quality. Oh, the other thing I've forgotten to say, back to me just two seconds. You are meant to wash all of your new fabric before you print onto it because it might have some sort of coating on it or starch that could prevent the, um, the dyes from taking hold properly. But if you don't want to do that, I'm not going to tell the textiles police if you don't do that. I am. Okay, all right, so back to the overhead. So here's my pad. First of all, I'm just gonna show you how I load up the pad. Let's just carry on with the red. Let's carry on with my paintbrush. I'm just gonna take a liberal amount and I'm literally just gonna slop some in the middle here, like so. Like I mentioned before, I don't tend to water this down, all right? So just do an area of the size that you need for your block, 
okay so you don't have to cover the whole thing so that's simples and then I'm just going to start off with this one again okay and I'm literally just going to lightly tap it into the paint a number of times now can we get to the super 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 close-up yes we are. I want you to I'm just going to try and let you see on in the light how that how much that's coated all right so obviously it's only coated the actual design but you want a good coating all over and if you feel it's looking a bit sparse in places just do another couple of taps into the paint and you'll probably have to replenish this um, every few times that you print okay so I'm just going to bring this up a little bit to the edge of the mouse mat so there's my mouse mat there's my fabric I've got a kamikaze fly flying around right then I'm just going to confidently press it down and that's when you want the give okay so just get a good old press down and move it clean away then I'm just going to go back into my let's keep the paint pad there underneath paint pad and I'm going to load some more paint onto that and if it feels like this is drying out or there's just not that much sitting on the surface that's when you need to load some more in okay so again I'm just going to press it down and move it away okay so I'm just going to use this as a test piece um, I want to show you now how perhaps if I don't have enough on here what might happen okay so let's just do it a bit half baked but this might be something that you like the look of okay there we go so you're going to get something that's not as vibrant and not as strong so if I load up a whole load more paint onto here and just make it a lot thicker and then I'm just going to get quite a lot more on here and then I'm just going to move that out of the way let's just bring it down I'm going to carry on my design so I'm aligning my design each time with the actual wood block itself trying to keep it quite straight pressing it down I've got a nasty crease in the fabric there but we'll just ignore that for a second now that's given me a much bolder print okay did you have a question there Chris no no okay all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move on to a nice piece of gingham uh, which is the the one that I couldn't find that had this print on it so let's get that ready obviously I've washed and ironed this not <laughs> Um, but I do think this works really, really well on the blue. Am I in the right place, by the way? Over, on the overhead, okay. All right, so I'm going to go over onto my ink pad. I'm just going to make sure I've got plenty of ink on there. Okay. Hopefully. You just never know. Um, and then I'm just going to decide confidently that I'm going to plonk it about here. I am very sort of Heath Robinson. I don't tend to worry about these things too much. Ta-da! Okay, so then let me bring this over. <clears throat> now, I reckon I can probably get one more out of this without having to add more paint to it. But I, I don't know if you can see from the camera, but the paint is very much sitting on the surface of this piece of fabric here. I've got a funny little don't know that's the other thing you know about using the wool felt I feel like you want a lint free fabric um, to put your paint onto because you don't want lots of little hairs in it okay can you see how cool this is going to look now I'm just going to if I can manage not to drop the block midway through I'm just going to bring that down because I like my little mouse mat situation all right so now I'm just going to show you how I add this paint here so I'm not adding very much each time I'm just adding a little bit and like I say you could water this down I do feel like you lose some of the kind of vibrancy if you water it down to be brutally honest but your pot of paint should last you certainly long enough to do a couple of projects and then obviously having the gingham is jolly handy because you can kind of line it up quite well just going to go for the next one like that and so on I notice a small rocking movement you're doing there Julie. yeah Is I mean that that's critical? Just, well no it's not critical it's just me pressing it down and making sure I've got that 
I'm, I want to use the word purchase, but I feel like it's not right. I'm giving it that extra welly. Let's use the word welly. And I'm only using a dishcloth under here to sort of protect my mouse mat from getting covered in, in ink, uh, in paint. But as you can see, actually, it hasn't really come through to the other side. I think it depends how much of it you use. Um, I mean, normally, when, if I'm not doing this on camera, I'd have this well away from the piece of fabric that I'm actually printing onto. And I'd probably make sure that my piece of fabric was quite flat and taut. Okay, let me just do one more up there so you get the the general idea. Yeah, I mean, you do just want to give it a good side to side. There we go. That didn't have quite as much paint on it. But like I'm, I was saying earlier, you know, this is part of it. It's not like a perfect, perfect thing. Um, let me just do one more because I need to finish that off at the top. How are we doing for time? Are we okay for time? Yes. Okay, so let me just... Ah, that's better. If I put that at the top, I'm just going to add a little bit more paint onto it there. And then I am just going to get a little bit more onto there. So I'm just lightly dabbing it, lightly dabbing it, but just making sure it's got a good coating all over. Okay. And then I'm just going to add one more at the top, like that. Now there's loads and loads of things you can make with, with this printed fabric. Obviously you can do clothes. I did do the bandana for the dog. I'm loving the napkins and I'm loving the tablecloth, but I was still thinking table runner as well would be cool. I was also thinking lampshades would be great. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of options. All right, so let's move on to a different block. Let's use this one that I was using earlier actually, because I haven't done much with this one. And I do think it's jolly nice. So I'm just going to, again, just dab that in there. It's slightly smaller. This is the one I dropped in my lap earlier. I'll try not to drop it in my lap. And then I'm just going to do the next line using this one. See, that's nice as well, isn't it? So you could do this all around the border of something, and then you could do something else in the middle. You can do two over the top of one another. And I, oh, I just reach forward and grab that. I did do, I haven't got this set at the moment, but I did do the dandelion and the little birds together. Um, and then I'll show you the tablecloth in a second. Um, now I just need to just inch my way in just to get this lined up. Oh, that's quite nice actually, isn't it? Just in a line like that, quite liking that. Let me see if I can get one more out of this without adding more paint to it. The other thing I did was um, on the tablecloth, I just got the end of a pencil that had an eraser on the end and I dipped that into a different colour and I added a centre to the flowery stamp. Which one was I using? This one. I did this one on the tablecloth and then I just added a little centre dot. So you could certainly add, you know, you could even use the end of your finger if you wanted to. Let me just move that. Now let's just move this up a bit. See what I mean about the mouse mat, it's not ideal. And I think that if you are doing something a little bit bigger, using the towels just rolled up, not rolled up, folded up, is absolutely fine. Right, I am just going to add one more lot of red onto here. Are there any questions while I'm doing this, Chris? Uh, how do you clean the stamp yeah, if just I change colour? Yeah, literally just under water with a bit of washing up liquid or so. You have or to something. go under water? Just under running water. What do you mean? Oh. Just wash it. Just wash it under running water, a bit of soap, and it comes off really easily. So that's easy peasy lemon squeezy. And that's um, obviously something you will want to do. You might want to change colour. Let's just get one more out of this. So what happened with Instagram then? We don't know. No idea. No idea. Okay. But I do think this set's rather nice actually. It's almost like under the sea. It's very attractive. But I'm just going to put one more lot on there and then I could potentially change colour and change design. Maybe. If someone 
wanted me to? I don't know. I'm just going to do that one there. And then I'm going to do that one there. So that's really, really lovely, isn't it? On that blue, I think, anyway. Uh, do you want me to do the anemone? Where's it gone? Here. I, I can't wait. <laughs> you sound so sincere. Do I? Have you got any new uh, jingles for us this week, Christopher? No, oh, well, that's very disappointing. Hmm. Were you Were you planning on making us one? Was I planning on making you one? Mm -hmm. I, I suppose I should, but I haven't. Have you got anything exciting to tell us this week, Christopher? What have you been up to? Um. See, now this one takes a lot more paint because it's got a lot more sort of surface area that's actually going to form part of the print. This is the only one, actually, out of all of the sets that we've got that's, that's got more printing area. The others are more sort of... Oh, and the, and the scallop has as well. That's got quite a lot as well, I suppose. Sorry, Chris, what were you going to... I wasn't, actually. Oh. I think I couldn't think of anything You have been up a cherry think. picker, though. and it, You've been up to see how high a cherry picker would go. Let's not um, dwell on my <laughs> cherry picking experience. Can you hear that noise? I don't know if you can hear it. That's the, yeah, the paint that you can. Yeah, that's quite a good noise, that. All right, so let's do one of these. Let's do it. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go for it, as usual. About there. I'm just going to give it a good old... Ta-da! Very nice. I do really like it, actually. I think it would look quite sort of bold and triumphant. I feel like you need to change colours. Oh, OK, yeah, no, I can do that. I, I feel like it's... All right, well, let me just do one more of these and then I'll show something in a different colour on a different gingham. Or on the same gingham. No? I'll stay out. <laughs> I'm just going to step back here and... Push my buttons. Actually, no, I want to show you something on the yellow because it's the yellow like one that. that's coming in the set. And I do like the yellow one. I think it works well, actually. OK, so anyway, that's that set. All right. Uh, let me just put that to one side now. And obviously, I would normally go and wash my hands. But I'm not in that position to at the moment. Right. Let me just grab some yellow. OK, so this is the yellow gingham that comes in the set that we're selling. And I feel like this is a really, really, well, it's a good colour anyway. I love yellow. But I feel like it's a good background colour for all of the different designs that we do. Let's go for the scallop. And then I want to show you, actually, uh, I've just got these little pads set up for when I want to change colour. So I've got another little cloth with another piece of cotton off cut on top that I've then covered in the new colour that I want to use. So let's go for the neon pink because, you know, why not? Um, so I'm just going to now get my neon pink paint out and then do I have a, yeah, I've got another paintbrush. Oh, I'm just so organised. Remarkably organised. Unusually organised. Um, so that then just gets put on there. I might need to do that a couple of times just to get enough ink on the block. I'm just going to take my block, okay, just going to press that into there a few times. And because I haven't used this for a while and it's dried up and gone a bit hard, it might just take a little while. I might just put another layer on there just to make sure I've got enough paint on my wood block. I'm really excited about getting some Christmassy ones, actually, because I think, oh, it'd be really cool to do a Christmas tablecloth and Christmas table runner and that kind of thing. Can you see that? I want you to try and see how you can see the paint on the block. Hopefully you can. There we go. Look. See how much paint is on there? So I've got a good covering all over. OK, let's go do some yellow. OK, so I've just got lined up my little mouse mat. But with the scallop, 
because it fits into itself with the shape of it, you could you could do an all over design. Oh, look at that beauty. Oh, I like that. Okay, I'm just gonna, again, because it was quite new, I'm just gonna add a bit more paint onto that. And let's just dippy dip, dap, dap, dap onto there. And you can kind of just, I think after a while you, you get an idea of how much you actually need. Um, I'm just gonna go along this way first, just to get my pattern going. Like that, okay, and then I could start to go upwards because I can see where to put it. So you do have to be relatively confident about where you're just going to pop the design. Actually, I am going to put just a tiny bit more on there. It's so annoying that a company that make all the other colours don't make the neon and I had to get it from somewhere else. But I was like, you have to have the neon. You can't not have the neon. Okay, so that works. So I, now I'm just going to decide how much space to give it sort of each side there and where I'm going to put it. And I'm just going to boldly go there. Give it a little wiggle, wiggle around. And there you go. Okay, let me just do one more of those. But like I say, if you've got other things at home that you think would make good prints, I mean, it could be a potato, I guess. Um, then by all means get, get them involved. So for example, here is oh, the very rude pencil that, um, that I used. So I was just literally just dabbing the end of the pencil into the paint like that. Let me just get my test fabric for this. And then just adding in Why don't you put that a little the, spot. Under the close up, so mm. it, well, or not as the case may be. Okay. What, here? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then... So that's literally just an eraser on the end of a pencil. All right. And I just want to show you... Oops. How I did my... Excuse me a second. <coughs> how I did my tablecloth, which I do admit needs an iron. I washed it, but I didn't iron it. So I did the flowery design, this one, all over. And then I got my eraser and just went boop, boop, boop in the center with a different color. But obviously you can really start to build them up a lot more than that if you want to. Personally, I like to keep it quite simple because I just think it, you know, on the gingham, it could get completely out of hand if you started to do too much. Um, but you could certainly have a bit of an experiment and I do think it's quite nice to just use the, the calico for that or some old, old bits of fabric that you might have laying around. Just use them for test fabrics and see what this looks like. You're just adding a new dimension, making something unique to you that no one else has got. But I just think it's such a nice thing to do and I just think it's, look. Look at that, guys. So as you can see, I've left like a little space in between on this one. Let's just do another one. Right, have we got any questions? I know it's all quite straightforward, really. Anyone want to ask anything else? Um, what's the capital of Venezuela? Do you actually know what the capital of Venezuela is? Because if uh, we all say, no, we don't know, go on then, what is it? You're going well, to your best guess. You're going to quickly Google it now, aren't well, you? Uh, I, uh, no sé, mi amor, Caracas? no sé. Oh, I don't no. know. I've got oh, no idea, well. darling. I'm very busy learning Spanish, but I don't need to know where everywhere is. No, somebody tell me if they you know, <laughs> capital of Venezuela. There we go. Look, can you see how easy this is? And it's it's good fun. The other thing I would say, actually, is he focusing? You know what? He's not focusing. Um, he needs to come back to me. He was actually probably on Google, Googling what the capital of Venezuela yes, is. Um, the, other th the other thing I was going to say is that it's probably quite a good thing to do with the, the kids. You know, because it's all water-based and it's quite good fun and it's quite simple, it's quite straightforward. <laughs> nice thing to do in the summer holidays. Were you right? Was, yeah. Is it Caracas? Whatever. So... Um, yeah, I just think it's a really lovely thing to do. The other trimming that I like for the edge of this, I don't know if I showed you this one, 
is the tassel trimming that we sell. I do think that that looks, oh, look, it's lovely. Lovely set of napkins could be made like that. Anyway, has anyone got any more questions? Have I not said about anything? I think I've gone through everything. E no, there's no more questions. All right, no okay. No more questions. Well, we're nice and early this week, which means we'll fit it all onto IGTV. So that's payoff for it not going onto Instagram. Um, right, my next tutorial, I think I'm going to do my next tutorial. One second while I lean over uh, and make a funny noise. Oh, crikey, I'm going to make such a mess in a second. I'm going, to, I'm going to do some more punch needling, okay? I have done one, uh, a live tutorial on this already, but I do keep getting emails and questions, and in the shop as well, we get a lot of questions from people that still cannot get the hang of it. And I feel like there's some core skills that are required. It's not really a skill, um, <clears throat> just a core understanding that's required of how to do it. So, um, yeah. I think I'm not quite sure when we'll be doing that because we've got a few family things going on. It's all getting very hectic socially, isn't it? It's quite night lockdown. <laughs> anyway, I hope that's answered a few questions about how to do this printing and um, and that you're going to have a go. You don't have to buy the set, by the way. You can buy all of the bits and bobs separately. So you can buy the fabric separately, you can buy the little wood blocks separately as well, and you can buy the paint separately. Okay, I think that's it. Have a lovely rest of your Sunday. I think it's raining here. The usual British weather has come back. Um, yeah, have a lovely rest of Sunday and I shall see you all soon. Bye for now. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. Proper Torium. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. Proper Torium. It's chilly and